Notice how even Manchin says it's going to bring the cost of energy down by producing more energy. They're going to give money to windmill farms and, you know, solar energy uh, manufacturers or whatever. They're going to spread money around the green New Deal apparatus. So the most expensive, least efficient energy sources possible are going to get as much taxpayer cash as possible. And they're going to tell you it's bringing down the cost of energy. We all know you want to bring down the cost of energy. You want to get out of the way of the fossil fuel producers. You want to get out of the way of the folks working in and around the Permian Basin and in North Dakota. You want to allow American domestic energy production, which is what Trump did, which is how we got to true energy independence. And then Biden just gave it gave it away or, or decided he didn't like that. Didn't like it because of all the fossil fuels and the climate change. They're all such frauds, friends. They really are. <laughs> I got some good news for you. I like to share good news whenever I can, because the news cycle is obviously a lot of stuff that is concerning, to say the least. A grain shipment has departed uh, Ukraine for the first time since the Russian invasion. Now you may be saying, well, why does why does this really matter to us here? Ukraine is one of the biggest grain exporters in the world. And absent that supply on the global market, because grain is a global market, uh, you are likely to see substantial increases in the f- price of food. And in poorer countries, you might have even seen uh, hunger and, and perhaps even uh, some famines popping up in different places, depending if it got really bad. Now, it looks like they have a deal uh, to at least export the grain. So from the port of uh, Odessa, uh, 26,000 metric tons of corn headed to uh, Lebanon. And from there, it'll be distributed to other other places. Uh, but that's going on right now. That's a good thing. Russia is also a very big uh, producer of fertilizer. So that was another concern here for the global food production market, which very few people think about. You know, we when I say think about, we obviously constantly think about food. I think about food too much. But where our food comes from and who has to do what to make sure that they're Uh, is bread on the shelf, so to speak. Uh, People don't spend very much time thinking about it. We live in this world of incredible abundance now. But as you've seen, even with the supply chain disruptions, the problem with baby formula, it doesn't take that much to throw our very complicated system off a bit. And there can be real real suffering that results from that. So good, good news from the grain front, which matters. I mean, think about it almost like if we had lost a major oil producer entirely offline. Now, of course, Russia is still producing oil, despite all this stuff in the early days of that invasion. It's still selling its oil in the global market. But if we lost an oil producer, everybody would realize the downstream effects of that. Same thing for grain, price of food. And already with the rising prices you're seeing in the grocery stores, this was a, a, a real challenge, something people were concerned about. So I'm um, I don't know, by the way, if it's still going to hit pretty hard or not, but at least there's some deal and and there is some. Think about this. Russia and Ukraine are at war, but they know they got to get the grain out. That's that gives you, I think, a sense of the incentives here and the seriousness of the situation. And then there's the incentives for Joe Manchin to have done this last minute deal to do essentially a scale down a skinny build back better if you will which is the biden plan right build back broke as some people call it whatever but this is a a slimmed down version of that it was interesting uh abc's john carl over the weekend asked him why you know because he had been saying oh i won't do anything with climate provisions i mean this was a huge head fake from mansion and let's just get this out of the way right now there there are a lot of lies they're telling you about this oh it's not going to reduce taxes oh it's not going to increase inflation oh it's not true tax and spend democrats have a fever and the only prescription is taxing and spending that's it that's really what this does it moves some money around to people that they like or causes that they like and is going to increase costs in a lot of ways for other people but don't worry they'll point to the you know everything is going to be more expensive for you but there's some money being thrown or, or some additional leeway to negotiate prices 
for prescription drugs for seniors on, on Medicare. So that's how they're hoping politically to distract people from the fact that, well, everything else is going to get more expensive and job jobs are going to be hurt by this and they're spending more money at a time of, of serious inflation. Here is ABC's John Carl asking Manchin, why why the secrecy? Why did it have to be negotiated in secret? As you know, this has rubbed some of your colleagues the wrong way. Bernie Sanders uh, said, last I heard, Senator Manchin is not the majority leader. Despite what you may think, last I heard, he is not the only member of the Democratic caucus. Why did this have to be basically just you and Chuck Schumer in a room? I understand all the frustration and the reason for that. I didn't want them to go through that again. I didn't know if we could get a deal. I did not know if we could come to an agreement. So why would I put people through this, all, all this drama? I, I'm not, I've been through this for eight months. I tried. I kept trying. I stayed there and kept talking. I just couldn't get to where they wanted to go to in my caucus. And rather than everybody down, and here we go again, I didn't want to go through that. So I wanted to see if we could come to that agreement. I thought it fell apart a couple of weeks ago, but it didn't. We come back and we start making adjustments to make sure it wasn't inflammatory. This is not adding to inflation. This is going to help take us to a place of prosperity. I truly believe in my heart that we're going to have more energy produced. We're going to be able to help our geopolitical partners around the world who are in desperate need of our energy. Of course. And we're going to be able to be so energy independent. And we're all going to, and, and we're going to be able to invest, John, in the energy of the future. It is remarkable that this uh, this guy has been elected as many times as he has in West Virginia, a very red state, a very pro-Trump state. And you're voting for a Democrat for anybody in that state who's remember that it, you're not you're not just voting for Joe Manchin. You're voting for Joe Manchin, Democrat. And up to this point, we were always talking about how it seemed that he was holding the line against insanity and saving his own party. But really, it just meant that he ratcheted down their craziness. But he's still going along with it. He's still a part of the machinery of the Democrats that has led us to this point where everything is more expensive, where everything in the economy is heading in the wrong direction. So how much credit can you give somebody for going along with bad ideas just a little less than the truly wacko Dems wanted him to. Now, he's claiming that the inflation, first of all, the fact that they call it the Inflation Reduction Act really tells you all you need to know. It is not reducing inflation, but they know that's a huge problem for them right now. Inflation is at a level where the political consequences are being felt for the libs. So if they're going to pass a bill that spends a whole lot of money on climate, the number of dollars that we should be spending from the federal government, your dollars, taxpayer dollars, to address the climate crisis is zero. It's, it's not $300 billion, It's not $3 billion, It's zero. But Manchin knows, it seems, that the Democrats have turned this into a religious belief. So he's going along with the... It fights inflation and lowers energy costs. John, I didn't change my, not, my mind. I've never changed at all. This is fighting inflation. This is all about the, the absolute horrible uh, position that people are in now because of the uh, inflation cost, whether it be gasoline, whether it be food pricing, whether it be energy pricing. And it's around energy mostly. It's driving these high inflation. This is going to do, take care of that because this is aggressively producing more energy to get more supply to get the prices down. That's what we're doing. But we didn't raise taxes, John. That's just not true. He is raising taxes. OK, this would raise taxes when it's passed and done. And in fact, a, a the, the latest analysis of this that you can see suggests that it is going to fall. Some of the tax burden will fall on people making less than four hundred thousand dollars a year, which uh, that's not a surprise to you. I mean, this is classic Democrat bait and switch. Oh, it's all about just bringing down the price of prescriptions for seniors. That's just trying to get that's just Democrat propaganda. So seniors don't realize that, especially if you're on a fixed income, Democrats, the Biden administration are horrible for your quality of life. Oh, no, that's why we're, we're trying to just we're going to let Medicare do better negotiation over prescription drug prices. Well, what about the food, the rent or the mortgage, uh, the gas for your car, all that? Where, where's that price all going? Oh, it's going up. It's going up. But on this one, they're saying they're going to do the right thing. Notice how even Manchin says it's going to bring the cost of energy down by producing more energy. They're going to give money 
to windmill farms and, you know, solar energy uh, manufacturers or whatever. They're going to spread money around the Green New Deal apparatus. So the most expensive, least efficient energy sources possible are going to get as much taxpayer cash as possible. And they're going to tell you it's bringing down the cost of energy. We all know you want to bring down the cost of energy. You want to get out of the way of the fossil fuel producers. You want to get out of the way of the folks working in and around the Permian Basin and in North Dakota. You want to allow American domestic energy production, which is what Trump did, which is how we got to true energy independence. And then Biden just gave it gave it away or, or decided he didn't like that. Didn't like it because of all the fossil fuels and the climate change. They're all such frauds, friends. They really are. You know, I even see uh, Taylor Swift, who does have some catchy tunes, getting a lot of heat. I'm just, she has some catchy tunes. I'm not saying I'm a huge fan. I'm saying I'm like a medium fan ish. But uh, she she is getting a lot of heat because she flies everywhere private. But as a big climate activist, pay attention to what people do, not what they say, folks. A good lesson for life all the time. Good lesson for looking at Joe Manchin right now, too. Oh, yeah. Holding the line for sanity. $360 billion for green energy, folks. Yeah. Only $360 billion. Sure. Great idea. That's really going to help a lot, Joe. West Virginia. We got a lot of West Virginia listeners. If you vote again for this guy, I don't know what to say. I don't know. Right? West West Virginia, you're disappointing me.